What up, though? What up, though? What's up with the core class? So today is a very important day. We got the Youth Radio Annual Brains Beaker. You know, science gets together. We have quarterly. So yeah, this guy I'm be introducing. His name is Dr. Brian Fisher. He has obtained a PhD from UC Davis, has traveled to Africa and Madagascar to research ants. He has discovered over 1,000 species of ants. Now, since you're all old enough, I want to talk to you about the fun stuff of ant reproduction. Now, this is a queen ant. Now, at one time she had wings, and she's going to mate, and she's going to lose her wings and start her colony. Now, this is that itty bitty little male. That little itty bitty male finds the female, mates, it only mates once, the queen only mates once, and the male dies. Now, this queen ant could live up to 25 years. And she's going to keep the sperm alive for 25 years in this big old sack she has called a spermatheca. And that spermatheca will dish out sperm for the rest of her life to her eggs. Mm. What's even more amazing, how does sex determine? How do you have a male and a female ant? Well, if the, ma if the female gives an, egg, gives an egg a sperm, it becomes a female. If the queen holds back the sperm, it becomes a male. So that's how they determine a male and a female ant. I brought in this really cool ant colony, the Dracula ant. You'll probably never see these live again unless you actually go and dig up ants. These, these were found underground up in Sonoma County on a farm called Pepperwood. So I just pass these around. Why is it interesting? Because it kind of holds the key to a past. Like, what was it 50 million years ago? What was happening in the world? And these kind of old lineages kind of help reveal that story, this past story about factors that impacted uh, the scenario of evolution. And that's really cool. Um, we're going to open up for more questions. How many ant species inhabit Madagascar? I spent the last 20 years trying to answer that question. And I'm still going back. So when I began there, we knew there were 300 species of ants in Madagascar. And now we're up to 1,500. What did your mom say when you told you you were going to study ants? Studying ants is hard to communicate, but luckily there's this famous professor, E.O. Wilson. And he writes a book every year, and one of them got the Pulitzer Prize. And he studies ants. So thanks to E.O. Wilson, I can say, Mom, I'm just like this guy. He won the Pulitzer Prize and is really famous. And this made it a lot easier for me. What made you study ants? It happened like this. You see, growing up in the Midwest, you know what the Midwest is? It's like cornfields. I grew up in a cornfield. And I think it's because of National Geographic, actually. I got this magazine in the mail once a month. And it seemed like all the cool things were happening somewhere else. The mountains were somewhere else. All this rainforest was somewhere else. But I had corn. So I decided, well, when I get old enough, I'm leaving and I'm going to find this interesting place. So I decided I'm going to work outside. I want a job where I can work outside. I want a job that's going to take me out into the world. And biology said, that's it, man. I'm going to be a biologist. So you're all scientists now. Congratulations. Yeah. All it takes is to ask a question. Can we get a round of applause with Dr. Fisher, please? <laughs> it's a wrap.